everyone. Good evening. It is a little bit past six, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Holly Grand. I am going to be facilitating our webinar this evening. I just want to go over a few reminders before we get started. Uh, because this is a webinar, your cameras and microphones are going to be disabled uh, along with the chat. If you have questions at any point during the presentation today, please use the Q&A feature that is going to be located on the bottom of your screen in Zoom. Uh, we are going to be answering all questions at the end of the presentation this evening, but please feel free to um, type your answers into that Q&A box at any point during the webinar. If you want to provide public comment about the proposed regulation changes that we're talking about this evening, uh, you must submit those through the online comment portal. Uh, we are not going to be accepting comments through Zoom. Uh, you're going to be receiving a follow-up email from Zoom tomorrow with uh, our Coastal Fisheries email address, uh, along with a link to our online comment portal and a link to our Parks and Wildlife Education YouTube channel, where a recording of this webinar is going to be uploaded. Uh, and I think that's everything that I want to go over before we get started. So I'm going to hand it over to our presenter for the evening, uh, Dacus. Thank you, Holly. Uh, we'll get a screen share going and we'll get going just momentarily. Uh, greetings, everyone. This is uh, Dacus Geeslin with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department Coastal Fisheries Division. This presentation this evening will include proposed changes to our saltwater fishing regulations for license year 2024. License year 2024 will begin on September 1st, 2023. And following the presentation, we'll gladly answer any questions you may have specifically related to the suite of these proposed saltwater fishing regulations. We won't be taking any public comment tonight on this virtual webinar, but we will direct you to the, uh, to the online public comment site to gather your input and position on the proposed regulation changes. This evening, we'll be presenting three proposed regulation changes for final consideration and, and adoption at the March 23rd Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission meeting held at the Austin headquarters. These proposals include changes that would match federal fisheries regulation changes in our state waters. Federal fisheries regulation changes are brought about through different, different avenues, uh, including congressional legislation through the Gulf of Mexico Fisheries Management Council, which Texas Parks and Wildlife has a seat within that council, and through the National Marine Fisheries Service. The purpose of these regulation changes is to match federal regulations in state waters in an attempt to reduce confusion for our anglers that may be fishing in both those federal waters and coming in and, and, and docking through our through our, our state waters, but also to provide ease of enforcement for our law enforcement in those state waters it simply makes makes it easier on our game wardens to enforce some of these some of these laws. The first proposed regulation change involves a short fin mako shark. Earlier this summer, the National Marine Fisheries Service enacted a rule prohibiting the landing or retention of short fin mako. We propose to simply add this species to our list of prohibited shark species for both the commercial and the recreational sectors. Currently, there are 22 sharks on the prohibited list. However, there are are 16 sharks that anglers may harvest within various size limits. Our harvest monitoring program or our creel program has no recorded landings of short fin mako shark within the last 10 years. Our next proposal involves a two-part regulation change for cobia or more commonly known in, as, in Texas as ling. Uh, the proposal would match recent federal regulation changes of a bag limit change moving from two fish per day to a one fish bag limit per day and a vessel limit of two fish per trip. This change is proposed to address declining stocks of cobia in the Gulf and really facilitate ease of enforcement with those federal regulation changes. In Texas, we have observed decreased landings in both the recreational and the commercial fishery. In fact, very few anglers and fishing trips land three or more cobia. When we look at individual anglers, of the private anglers who harvest cobia, 97.7% catch one fish and very few or 2.3% catch two fish. When we look at party boat or guided trip anglers, 
98.6 catch one fish and 1.4 percent catch two fish. Similarly, as, as displayed in this graph here, when we look at, at trip bags over time, our private trips, which is that orange bar within the graph, our private trips that harvest cobia, 81% of those trips harvest one cobia, and 14% of those trips harvest two cobia. So all sum in total, less than 5% of the catch on private boat trips land three or more cobia. Trip bags for fart party boat trips, which are in, is indicated in the blue bar on this graph, show that 76% of trips that harvest cobia harvest one fish, and 17% of party boat trips that landed cobia caught two fish. So less than 7% of party boat trips land three or more cobia. The bottom line here is it's very rare for private or party boat trips to land two or more cobia. And this would be, this would be in line with that vessel, vessel limit of two fish per vessel. The next proposed regulation change involves catch and release practices related to reef fish. The Gulf of Mexico reef fish complex is comprised of about 31 species of different species of snappers, jacks, tile fishes, several grouper fishes, grouper species, hogfish, and triggerfish. The most popular of these is which is the red snapper. The Descend Act passed in Congress in 2020 and implemented by the National Marine Fisheries Service earlier this year, or actually in January 2022, applies to both the commercial, charter, headboat, and private vessel fishing for reef fish. The Descend Act requires anglers to have a venting tool or a descending device rigged and ready to use. Use of these devices and tools attempts to address the issues of barotrauma. Barotrauma is, is a common problem with these deeper dwelling fish. And once they're caught in deeper waters and brought to the surface, the air bladder can expand and causes some serious complications with the fish, oftentimes resulting in mortality. Research shows that use of a descending vice and or a venting tool can have a profound, profound impact on survival and reduce mortality by as much as 20 to 42%, depending on the depth and the water temperature at which the, at which the fish is caught. Of, of note, um, other states, our colleagues in Florida, uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission recently passed an identical proposal for refish in their state waters. The rule, this rule will also require the use of descending device or venting tool if the fish is existing exhibiting signs of barotrauma prior to the release in their state waters. This slide simply shows pictures of a couple of venting tools and descending devices. Uh, the venting tool pictured on the top left of the photo is a sharp hollow syringe type needle that penetrates the abdomen of the fish and allows the excess gas to escape. And the descending devices shown on the bottom of the left photo are weighted tools that release fish at a depth that allow them to recompress and recover from barotrauma. Current recommendation is to descend fish to at least half of the capture depth. And also pictured on the bottom right is a, a weighted crate or a basket in the bottom photo that can be used for multiple fish at a time. And uh, it's spr simply spring, spring loaded door can be opened by anglers at the desired release depth. We certainly recognize with the implementation of the, the Descend Act, um, the need for proactive education and outreach efforts. Uh, the education will need certainly need to focus on several components of catch and release of reef fish. One being to recognize the signs of barotrauma, what that looks like within these fish as they're brought to the surface, and also bring awareness to the benefits of descending fish intending for release. And for us, that really plays into the uh, the mortality rate of these fish as they play into, as they're brought to the surface. And this folds into some of the stock assessment modeling that we, we use to manage our, our fisheries. And probably more important, importantly is the appropriate use of descending devices and tools so, so our anglers are not doing more harm than good to the fish that they're intending to release. In 2018, um, our, our department partnered with Texas Sea Grant to produce an informational brochure, as you see here on this screen. Uh, and if you'd like a copy of this brochure, please reach out to your local Parks and Wildlife Coastal Fisheries Field Stations. 
Fortunately for us, uh, our other partners have some vast uh, resources available as well. Uh, one being Release Sense. This is a partnership through the Heart Research Institute, Shimano, and Coastal Conservation Association that provides some really neat instructional how-to videos for safe and effective catch and release practices for a variety of fish, including reef fish, but also inshore fish, tarpon, other, other different fisheries within, the, within their program. Also, the Return Them Right, a program through the Gulf States Marine Fisheries Commission, Florida Sea Grant, and NOAA is also a great resource that's currently offering free descending device gear and venting tools to anglers that complete a short training video. So in summary, this proposal would mirror the Descend Act in federal waters by requiring reef fish anglers that are fishing state waters to have a venting tool or descending device rigged and ready but we'd, we'd propose to take it that extra step and actually require anglers to use those devices if releasing a fish that's showing those signs of barotrauma. Again, those signs of barotrauma may include bubbling scales, bloated stomach, bulging eyes, protruding stomach, and protruding intestines. You can see here on the on the photo to the left a sign of a of air bladder expansion, which actually is forcing the stomach out of the out of the mouth of the fish. But on the right side, you see that descending vice, which would require the a rigged and ready, dedicated specific rod to use for those fishes. And in summary, your coastal fishery staff are proposing the following recommendations to be included in the regulatory proposals for license year 2024. For the short fin mako shark, place them on the prohibited list of shark species. For cobia, a bag limit reduction from two fish to one fish per angler per day, but also a vessel limit of two fish per vessel. For reef fish, proposing the, the descending device or venting tool be rigged and ready on board and require anglers to use them on fish showing signs of barotrauma. This concludes our presentation this evening. Please submit your comments related to these regulation proposals in the following ways. You can attend in person at the next uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission meeting on March 23rd at the Austin headquarters, where you'll have three, three minutes to provide oral comments. Or you can certainly provide your uh, comments online through our online comment portal. Uh, it's a website uh, that's linked here, but if you want to scan that QR code, and that'll be in the recorded presentation as well. Or you can simply email your comments to us at the uh, cfish at tpwd.texas.gov. And I'll leave that up for just a moment before I stop sharing screen. And I want to thank everyone for attending tonight, and we will uh, answer any comments, answer any questions, I'm sorry, answer any questions if we have any. All right, gang, I'm not seeing any more, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I would suggest we go ahead and uh, close this webinar down. Yeah, thanks, Dacus. Um, I'll hop in really quick, just as a, a reminder for everyone that you will be receiving an email from Zoom tomorrow with a link both to the website where you can provide your public comment, um, as well as uh, a link to our um, YouTube channel where you can view a recording of this, this webinar uh, if you missed any part of it this evening. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Dacus, for the presentation. Um, and please keep an eye out for your in your email tomorrow for more information. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Holly. Bye, Thank everyone. you all.